Here, this is going to be a very close, fun battle here as well. Divinity, a little bit, a little bit uh, of a stronger team put together. There's a lot of players in there that have played together as well and uh, know each other by walking down there. Uh, I think he's one of the the main guys of the house. I think he's maybe the the team captain as well. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, you've got Hydra in there. You've got Vlavius, Jabba, Rager, all good players. Toga, I've heard quite a few times as well. On the defense, you've got Tortuga, Gary Stu. You've got these these noggers. Uh, you're next. You've got Cecilia. I see them quite a lot in Sieges as well. Um, and obviously these guys, I, I know quite a lot of them because they were in the alliance with us this season. So it's going to be interesting to see the strategy here. They've got some uh, Javcav to be used. They've got some Flames, uh, IPGs, and in the attack, you've got a mixed bag here. IPGs, Fort Brasho, some Spear Sergeants actually. It's, uh, so Star Wars actually getting used. This is interesting as well. <clears throat> Let's see what happens here for this one. This is... Divinity versus Wellblood. Wellblood are on the defence for this fight, and it's going to be a, a, a lot more different than they've seen the last bat, but uh, the last matchup zero. So pay attention to what happens here. You'll see the different units that are being used, different strategies that are being used, and obviously different hero classes as well. You've got plenty of muskets on the defence here. You've got plenty of malls as well. You've not seen malls get used very often recently. There's normally be one or two on each team, but not as many as this. This is four heroes of malls trying to deal some extra high-end damage you've got some cavalry units ready to sally out here if that is their script here with the jav cav we're going to jump outside straight away to see if well blood choose to use that cav or if that cav is there as a distraction to make sure people see that they've got cav and start to think about a defense here well blood take it to the walls getting onto the artillery you're going to start slowing down the siege towers as much as possible. If you could do anything to slow down the siege towers, slow the, the push of siege towers, which is what uh, the guys from Rose tried to do with their sally out. It did work for a bit of time. It does slow them down and it does slow the units down. But doesn't really, didn't overall make them win the unit. The unit advantage had for a wee bit, but because they were losing the heroes so quickly, it made a massive difference here. But going forward, looks like Wildblood aren't going to defend A or B. Um, it's more normally the strategy on this map. Unlike uh, the previous matchup, uh, they obviously kind of did a, put a wee bit of a defense on A, B, um, whereas they don't normally do that for the most part. Now, with Polax and the Dutch, B and C, C, M1 had to choke them hard. Oh, that's very true. Fort Abrasio watching the first wing as Juju Pusa is the first to die. Gooby gets the drop dead achievement. And you've got one attacker already dead to Toga looking to just climb up the wall. You've got Vura Sertak in the back here, climbing up the wall in the back here. But nobody's actually there, so he's going to manage to get himself up if he tries to do it. As all the heroes from Wellblood start to make their way back to sea, which was expected as units start to make their way in. They'll get some free easy kills here. Neutral X just looking for some free easy kills on the surf, some woodcutters here. A is completely left undefended, as will B. So by walking, we'll start capping that one. The guys from Wellblood start to rotate back to the home point. Home point being the best area to defend from. As long as you can stay out the way of the trebs as much as possible, that is always the best way to be. Yo, Coffee, how are you doing, buddy? Let's get this. I forgot I got, got the camera still on. We'll get the camera out of the way so you can see the whole battlefield as it is. Wellblood on the defense got theirself set up here for home point. There's no artillery, guys. Remember that as well. So the only artillery they did get use of was the ones that's outside and on the wall. Black Arrow Ragnio has left the battle. I have no idea what's happened here. He must have disconnected, but the battle's already underway. You've got Google Gucham. Taking the, the B point as everybody else starts to make their way up towards the t uh, the point. You've got ranged classes up top here. Some short bows and musket players are waiting to start dealing some damage with their bombs, with their uh, long bows or short bows or whatever else they've got, potentially trying to, to deal some damage. I see Gary Stu, Tortuga, Black Air Angel. Oh, you did see Black Air Angel until he died. Until he disconnected. But yeah, here we are now with the guys making their way from Divinity onto the point here, getting the supply point, getting the units all set up, ready for their push and to see where they're going to go from here. You've got the Javelin Sergeants of Wildblood here, trying to throw as much damage down here with their Javelins onto the supply point, trying to take out some units as they get their throws in to the Fort Abrasio. Obviously, they're getting some heals on that point as well, though, so that will stop them from dealing too much damage to them. But there is a few numbers dying here to the, to the Javs, Always Jav Sergeants, fantastic amount of damage can be done with them if you get them to be able to hit their targets. 
and the guys from Divinity will start to make their way and set themselves up. Jabba is just trying to have a look here. What he can see is going to try and come up on the wall, but sees four heroes trying to rotate towards him, so he makes that no effort whatsoever. Goatchman is just uh, just the Polacks just roaming around on their horses, just staying alive on their horses, just having a bit of fun, trying to check it, see what's going on. Wild Blood will try their utmost here just to keep an eye on what's going on by st staying on top of the walls here. And with this top superiority, they get a good sight of the enemy and where they're going, where they're moving from and to. Tolga starts to go through the main alleyway there just to see what's up on the wall. He comes up here as a glaive, sees the units and sees the heroes and makes his way back down the stairs. The stalwarts start to make their way through the left supply point side as the javelin sergeants will start to do some damage here. A good push coming in from the left hand side here from Divinity. Will they start pushing both directions? They do. They're starting to push in both gateways here. Prusa and the guys from Wellblood. Having to rotate here, their calf coming into the back. They've got some jab calf throwing some damage down as the guys start making their way moving forward. Divinity moving their units slowly but surely forward. They've got all these pole axes, probably all anti CC immune, starting to make their way forward towards the supply point. As a treb comes in on top of that supply point, and that might wipe the most of the calf that's on that supply point. If that one hits, there's a couple of hits on it now as a couple of heroes and you, well, units do die as the push goes forward. The jav calf still, still doing damage, but the good push here from the guys of Divinity, your next falls down. We're down to 15 versus 13 here. They start full pushing, full rotating all the way around as much as possible as Wellblood don't know what to do with herself here. The guys are going to spawn straight in the spawn point here, but if Wellblood can get some cabin like they are now, the Armagers, or is that the Calfrax coming round? They're going to charge straight through the units there. Lots of heroes already into that. Gayubu takes a good hit against them. Stain Venter takes a good hit as well as the Jav Calf starts to come out. Another set of cavalry comes in here. More Calfrax coming through the charge here. Lots of heroes dying. We've got 10 heroes alive from Wellblood, and so far the work of the push is 15 heroes still alive for Divinity. Nobody's dying. They're picking off heroes one for one from Divinity. Wild Blood don't know what to do with themselves. The respawns are coming in, but they're not going to be able to do anything in that position here. They're going to respawn straight into Trebs, straight into potential defensive strictures already set up on the supply point. They've got eight defenders left available and 15 attackers all on that supply point, trying to cap that supply as some well blood players have to commit themselves to get onto the point as a calf charge comes in here. Wiping a couple of heroes, a couple of heroes fall to their death here, but well blood are down to nine heroes alive. Make that 10 as one just spawns in, but we're 11 v 11 now. They've, now well blood might have the advantage here. Treb comes in, it's going to be a decent Treb if it can hit these units in the back here. Units of... Uh, what is that, IPGs? Oh, that's Iron Reapers charging in. Char Iron Reapers make their way in. It's still 10 defenders on that SPAC supply point, 11 heroes on the attack. But the defenders are going to have the advantage here because they have the numbers with their constant respawn from that position that they're in. Well, Blood have managed to push off that fight, but it's a very, very strong fight and a strong push. We're still quite even on unit counts here, but hero count-wise, down to six for the attackers. Make that five as Van... Now that Garen falls to his death here, Rubaka picks up that kill here and the heroes will have to reset themselves for Divinity's next push. You still have 13 trails available. It was a very good push, very good strong defence on that supply point. Once they took it for a little bit against Wellblood, they were winning the fights for a good bit. But because of the respawn positioning for Wellblood, they get an instant position to charge straight onto that supply point and potentially wipe out more heroes and kill the units as they're there on that point and we have obviously a defensive area here where they can't take any damage so they can have things like javs, they can have ranged units here, they can range classes, they can have um, jav cav all in that back battery there not taking any damage but dealing damage to the guys that were on the supply point. Ruger is just having a look, Toga's having a look here as the Fort Abrash are here on the left hand side gate here watching for anything that comes through, Javkav just looking around just to see what they can de do any damage potentially to Fort Abrash that are down there as a musket bomb comes in from up top. Call me sure with a clever, clever position in there. Hits the cow chops down as well. Starts to deal some damage to the Port of Brasio. Javcab's going to start moving their way forward from Wild Blood here just to try and whittle down as much of the units that are moving forward and pushing forward. Plenty of pole axes on the attack inside here of Divinity and it's working in their favour for some of these pushes and they're staying alive long enough and surviving. But Pusa leaves the battle as well. So that's them down to 14 men each. It's almost fair now that there's one each from both teams out of the battle. Divinity... 
have moved to go for a full on push towards home point now. They're all going home, but they're leaving the back entrance empty completely and they get onto the home point. They've got ISGs and Flamers in the back here for Whale Blood for Abrasio, but there's also Psychelia Militia who were bombing down from the top here. Senji Grenadiers trying to get a position to bomb down here as well as the guys from Divinity start to push in. The Trebs coming in, taking out the units that are just coming through the main area away from the supply point. Tolga has got a unit of Fort Abrasio guard in the back so nothing can come around the back. Cecilia out there trying to find some ways in with their calf as the guys and all the Polaxes make their way into the home point. The calf's going to have to come in. A unit of Keshex there comes in from Wellblood, but nothing really happens with it. A lot of the heroes seem to be dying here. They're coming at the back here as they were down to 10 heroes left for Divinity. Them Cav is doing some work in the background there. As I said, they weren't doing any work. All of a sudden, they're down to 6 heroes. Divinity, Wellblood have done a fantastic job. Good rotations. They killed the heroes really quickly there, and it looked like it was going well in the favour of Divinity, but now Wellblood have the 200 unit advantage going forward in this defence. Toga has still got his Fort Abrasio there watching as a Jav Cavs come in to wipe out the Fort Abrasio and another normal Cav charge comes through. Will they start pushing herself out? No, Wellblood have decided that is it. We've done what we need to do there. We'll go back, we'll resupply and we'll get our units back to full health. Ready for Divinity's next push. They only have four heroes alive at the moment. 500 units versus 793 units alive on the side of Wellblood. There's 11 Trebs still available. There's still plenty of opportunity. When Divinity loses units, they get farmed. Yep, they definitely do. Um, when you lose your units, it's very difficult to stay alive um, and not deal the damage if the other team has units and heroes fighting you off. But it has been a very interesting, wild changes and some good pushes, actually, from Divinity. Just... They just don't have that full-on commitment afterwards. Once they get the competition and they're winning that advantage, there's no constant go forward after that. And I think if they left that supply point and went to the whole point... After that first push, they probably would have had it. Um, they could have blocked off the them coming in from the supply and then just had to wipe out the units in the corner here. They've got Fort Abrasio in the corner, they've got ISGs in the corner. Obviously, with no Trebs uh, able to hit that area, there's also no units that are nobody that can actually deal damage to the units in that corner there. There's no mortars, there's no siege equipment that you can do or put down, which makes that defensive corner pretty defensively strong. Uh, especially if you have things like flamers inside there as well. Have we got flamers in there this time? Uh, nope, they've got IAPGs, they've got grey hairs, got ISGs and Fort Abrasio unit in the corner there. The guys from Divinity sitting up in this po uh, wall portion here and looking to figure out where their next way of attack is going. Are they going to go the supply point side again or are they going to go towards the home point push? Or maybe even split it. If they could split it and split the guys from Wellblood, it might work in their favour. There's units up top though, Senji's. And uh, yeah, the Senji Grenadier is ready to just drop bombs on top of everything getting into that push here on that side here. Kami Show still using that uh, bombs and the cow traps to deal damage to all the units that are all setting up. Ready in this gateway. Just back and forward, back and forward. Deal some damage. Bro throw some bombs. See what you can do. Well, blood rotating back and forward. Just having a paying attention to what is it. Big yawn. Bored is he? No, I am tired. I've, I've had too much sun today, coffee. Too much sun in Scotland. I'm not used to it. I'm, I'm burning up and falling asleep as the wife brings in some pizza. Oh, you baby. What a dancer she is. Some pizza. Gotta love some pizza, boys. Pizza and waffles. You're gonna be like, what? Waffles? What is that? Waffles? You have waffles with pizza? I fucking do. Mmm, yummy. Oh, Cecilia has been picked. Has picked oh, up Aryan Khan. He's going to throw him into the units here as they all start to pick on him. Show bombs him down to the ground. Aryan is dead. Picked off at the side. Oh, hi, Lickstone. How are you doing? Let's see, where are we going from here? That is the question. Where are they going? Well, Blood have the advantage here. Still, 785 units versus 584 units. It's a bit slower here, like we said it would be. It's a little bit slower here. They've got 5 minutes and 40 seconds to try and cap the point.
so many pole axes still making their way around to see what's going to happen here. So far, well, blood. Strong, valiant defense working in their favor. They can wait. Making you yawn, coffee. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, blood have got all the time in the world for them. They can they can keep doing this rotation back and forward, paying attention to what's going on, and not having to worry yet. Yeah, we need the uh, Benny Hill music, don't we, GM? We need the Benny Hill. Uh, I'd be yawning because I'm speaking too much. Yep, that's what it is. I don't take a breath. I can't help it. <laughs> I'm Scottish. I like to talk fast. Okay, so now Divinity start to make their way into the wars, the home point here. You see the, the bombs coming in and the grenades coming in from the top. Senji's dropping bombs. Senji Grenadiers trying to do some work here from the top along with our ball boys. Divinity pushing in to the right hand side trying to wipe out that little kill box in the corner if they can. Hero wise they have 13 unit heroes on their push making their way. Quad kill comes up by Gayubi as he also picks up another one there as well. By walking, calls in the trap strike. The trap strike is it going to be in a position. Look at all these heroes dying so quickly from Wild Blood. Not from well from Divinity, they're all dying so quickly. Well, but they're just putting in a kill after kill after kill, and they're down to three already. Divinity wasted all that time prepping for it, and all of a sudden, before you know it, they only have two heroes alive. Well, blood completely wipe them off the face of the earth. These heroes just don't survive as much as they're all pole axes. It's just they were just instant. They were killed so quickly. A very great effort, Cecilia, picking up another kill here. We have a 500 unit difference here in favour of Wildblood. With a total of 3 minutes still available. Only two heroes are alive here as you can see. Arya Khan and... Good you, I don't even know how you say his name. Gwijum. Well, blood, have the time now. Another three minutes left to defend this point with the unit advantage and pretty much a really big, strong hero advantage as things stand. He nearly vaporized. The Almighty says this must be a fashionable fight. It's drawn the finest people. Zalius Dark, thank you for the follow, buddy. Appreciate it. Welcome to the clan. Thank you very much. Good thing they blocked that entire entrance. Yeah. Exactly. Let's see. We're going to watch from this side here. Look at these units and heroes. Nah, that's boring. We need to up the volume. The Almighty says this must be a fashionable fight. It's drawn the finest people. Yo, Lord of the Rings, GR, thank you for the follow. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bird of Quinn, how are you doing, my friend? How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Now, welcome to the chat. There are two good things. Pull that's going to be good at with Dolomite once in a choke, enemy harder. Yeah, they, they can be good, but I, in this abundance of men, I have no idea if that's working in favor of Divinity. Divinity is. Trying to put in a strong push in here. All the pole axes making their way in. Look how many there is going in. Trev comes in. That's a good Trev there. Hits the jab cap in the back there. Ruger dies. There's only 1 minute 28. They're full on pushing. They have to do it. That's the only option they have. Now Wellblood are going to counter this. Senji is doing some work from the top ropes. And a calf push comes in here as well from Cecilia. Takes out all the units in the, the attack there. Cecilia is going to make their way around. This looks like that is it. The last minute. We're down to three heroes alive. That's a very good rotation. So 15 heroes alive in Wellblood, and Wellblood go on to win this one. That is a GG. That is a big GG from Wellblood. Big, big, massive GG in the chat. Oh, where am I going? Big F, that's a big F in chat for that one. That's a big F in chat for that. Here we go, 35 seconds left. We have Wellblood defending like absolute troops here. 
good rotations back and forward. There's a big, massive daft difference in units. There's 600 unit difference for in favor of Wellblood. Divinity's all out Polak spam did not work in their favor. Um, it was it was interesting, but it didn't work. Um, what can I say? Divinity, I've now got the chance to defend for their chance to get a point in this battle now that they've lost the first battle. Now that they've lost the first battle, guys, we want your predictions for the next one. Guys, look at this. By Woken is the MVP for the attacking side. Three hero kills, 85 unit kills. The most hero kills as well. Toga with three as well. On the defense, Gary Stu, our MVP, the Nadachi. Once again, another Nadachi, the top of the MVP board. Seven hero kills, 132 unit kills. Gaiobi oh, here as well. Massive effort, seven hero kills, 106 unit kills. You also have... Atomic Trex with 7 hero kills, 69, my favourite number. The Dogs of War, putting in some fantastic effort. Hero kill difference though, 55 heroes versus 18 heroes, a massive, massive, massive difference here in terms of units and hero kills in favour of Wellblood, who go on to be the 1-0 winners. They will now have...